Hey, hey, what's going on my math party people? Welcome back to another one here. Where we're following up on basically mixed practice with the law of exponents. Remember, we have the product law, quotient, power, powers, and negative exponents. And what we're doing here is part two of the series where we're mixing these together. So as you notice, if you take a look at number 26 over here, this is part of the worksheet if you're in the course of the program. So you have over 100 problems to work with, and on top of that, those speed drills after the fact. But taking a look here, we are mixing the product law and the quotient law. So let's go ahead and check out how this works, how we can handle this, and let's keep going the right way. So my advice is always this. Treat this like the order of operations. Obviously, you want to know your rules, your laws of exponents, but when you're mixing them together, just treat it like order of operations where if you see a fraction here, see if you can clean at the top, clean at the bottom, and then do your simplifications, then apply your laws, you know, do your thing. So if I'm taking a look here, up top in the numerator, not really much for me to go ahead and modify, right? There's x to the power six, y to the negative 10, not much for me to do yet. Now, I do notice that we have a negative exponent, and I am gonna wanna take care of that in a moment, but let me see first what I can do in the denominator by cleaning that up. So let's go ahead and take a look here at that denominator. We have x to the power of zero, so we know that's gonna to simplify to one, because again, anything to the power of zero is one, so that'll be one. And then on top of that, I also noticed that we have y squared, y to the negative one. I can definitely combine those. And lastly, we have 10 times nine that I can also take care of too. So again, there's a lot going on there in the bottom, so let's clean that up first, and then we'll see what we can do. So here we go. Let's go ahead and simplify here. So again, up top, we still have that x to the power of six, y to the negative 10. But over here in the denominator, again, this x to the power of zero cancels out. And really quick, before we continue my math party people, I know you're enjoying this, and you can have thousands of problems just like this in our program. In our program, you have four main things to help you succeed and more. But mainly, in our course, you're gonna get access to recorded lessons, you're gonna get access to guided practice just like this worksheets that you can print out and try or keep them online and lastly speed drills to raise your confidence that way when you take the test there's no test anxiety there's no pressure because you've been timed before you know what to do and that's the feeling that we want and all of that's included in our program and more so take a brief moment click the link here in this video or in the description to learn about the program and then reach out to us if you have any questions sign up now let's get going and let's get back to the problem then if i look at the red here 10 times nine, that's gonna be 90. Then we have y squared times y to the power of negative one. Remember, when you're multiplying the powers, you're going to add those exponents. And before I even do that, just to recall here, we do have that x sitting right there. So let me just write that before I forget about it. But again, we have y squared times y to the power of negative one. And when we do that, we're gonna add those exponents. So two plus negative one, well, that's the same as two minus one. So that's just one. So we end up just having y in the denominator. All right, so to clean this up, to continue cleaning this up, what can we do? Well, look, we do have a negative exponent in the numerator, and we know that to make that a positive exponent, we will move that to the denominator. That's one. And then number two, I also notice that I can go ahead and say, hey, I have x to the power of six divided by x, and I can take care of that as well. So two things that are happening here. One at a time though, this y to the power of negative 10, I'll go ahead and move to the denominator. And then this right here, I'll go ahead and simplify. So let's get to work here. Let's get to work. So let's rewrite this. Keep that 90 in the denominator. Okay, so first the x's. x to the power of six divided by x. Well, again, when you're doing division, you subtract those exponents. So when you subtract those exponents, we'll have six minus one. Because again, if you don't see the exponent, it's a one. So we have six minus one, that's five. And so we'll have x to the power of five up top. Then up next, again, I want to move that y to the power of 10 to the denominator. I still had the y there. And then I'll write the y to the power of positive 10 right there. And so the last thing I really need to do is just make sure I multiply y times y to the power of 10. And I'm good. So we end up having right over here, x to the power of 5 over 90y to the power of 11. And there it is. 
I know it definitely feels like it took a little while, but that's because I only did one thing in each step. Um, you know, toward the end, I did two just to kind of save a little time. But I hope you can understand, my party people, that again, if you have multiple things to apply, let's just make sure to take care of it one step at a time. And there's B. Let's take care of another question here. Let's go to number 27. So it looks like, again, we have a lot going on. But what we really want to do, my party people, is again, see if we can clean up anything before we get started uh, you know, in, in a more serious sense. So what I notice is that, hey, we have x to the power of 0, y to the power of 0. Both of those are just going to reduce to 1. Both of those are just going to reduce to 1. So let me do myself a favor really quick and just rewrite everything. Getting rid of any obvious simplifications. So right here, again, that cancels out. That goes to 0. That becomes 1. That becomes 1. And another thing I noticed is that, hey, we have right over here let me switch over to let's say orange here i noticed that we have a three up top and a three on bottom when you have a three up top and bottom you can cancel those right cool so i noticed again two things that i could simplify those powers of zero booyah and then i also saw those threes those couldn't go ahead and say bye bye so with that what we have now we have four then we have the x to the power of 10 y to the power of negative 6, then we have x to the power of negative 3, and y to the power of 10. All right, up next, what can we do now? Well, I notice that I have some negative exponents that I can absolutely make positive. And remember, the way that you do that, you can go ahead and move that piece with the negative exponent between the numerator and denominator. So you move it to where it's not, and you can change the sign of that exponent. So for me, right over here, x to the power of negative 3, I'm going to move that to the numerator. And over here, this x, this y to the power of negative 6, I'll move that to the denominator. So in doing that, look at what happens here. Look at the opportunity that we give ourselves. We see that we're going to have 4x to the power of 10 up top, but then bringing that x to the power of negative 3 up, it becomes x cubed. And then in the denominator, we already have the y to the power of 10 present. And now we include the y to the power right here, right there. We now include the y to the power of 6 in the denominator. So boom. The last thing we need to do here is then combine those terms here by performing the product power of exponents. The product of power's law of exponents. So the way we'll do that, nice and easy, is this. For, uh, x to the power of 10 times x cubed, you add those exponents. So we have 4x to the power of 13. And then over here we have 10 and 6 for the y y to the power of 16. So my final answer is 4x to the power of 13 over y to the power of 16, and that will be answer choice D, right above my big old head. And there you have it. And so again, take it one step at a time, see what you can do, and go through it and get to work. Let's try number 28 out. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to try something a little different. What I'm going to do is, yeah, I'm going to simplify first, but also at the same time, I'm going to make any negative exponents positive before I begin. So let's try this out. So over here, again, that's going to cancel out because, again, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So we can ignore that. And on top of that, we see that we have u to the power of negative 8. Not 2u to the power of negative 8. It's just the u. The u is to the power of negative 8. That 2 stays exactly where it is because its exponent is 1. So we'll take that. We'll move u up here. And so what this will become now is the following. And again, if you're asking, could I just do the u to the fifth, u to the negative eight, could I combine those first? Absolutely, you could. I'm just showing you a different way to go about it and I promise you, you'll get the same answer. So we have three v to the power of nine and now we've brought up that u to the power of negative eight to make it positive eight. And then from there, we have the two u to the fifth, v to the ninth, in the bottom. And actually, now that we kind of look at this, this is pretty cool because what I noticed is, well, one, I made a mistake because I didn't include that 2 from earlier. So I'm going to include the 2 again, the v to the power of 9. And what you should notice is that you have v to the ninth, v to the ninth right there. Those cancel out. Nice and easy. Did me a favor. And here is your regularly scheduled announcement, my party people. Remember, guys, I host a free class every single week and more classes beyond that. 
So make sure to check the group tutoring schedule so you know when the classes are, when you can expect to see me live so you can raise your score and get that job you want. So click there to see the schedule and let's keep getting back to the YouTube video right over here. So now we have three u to the power of eight over two times two. Let me go ahead and highlight that for us. That's gonna be four. And then we have u to the power of five still right there. So with that said, bam, let's go ahead and combine these. We have the quotient law of exponents being applied. u to the power of eight divided by u to the power of five. We'll subtract those exponents and keep the power where the bigger number was. So we have u to the eight over u to the fifth. When you divide those, you'll end up with three u to the third power up top with four in the denominator. So 3u cubed over 4 is the answer, and that is choice B. So again, everybody, take your time. Apply the laws the proper way. The order, it can be mixed and matched. You can go ahead and go whichever way you want, as long as you're not interfering with the order of operations. So I'm going to do one more with us, my party people. Let's do one more here, and then I'm going to turn it over to you. That way, you can go ahead and get the practice in with the worksheets. So let's try number 29 out. Here we go. So the first thing that I'll elect to do is I'm going to go ahead and make any negative exponents positive along with, along with any obvious simplifications that we can make. So let's see what we can do. So any obvious simplifications I would say are, well, let's see. Do we have any x cubed that I can eliminate? No. Any y to the fifth that I can eliminate? No. But I do have plenty of negatives that I can go ahead and adjust. So... First of all, with the numbers, I have 2 and 6, and that'll become 12. That'll become 12 up top, right there. And actually, I won't highlight that. I'll simply make it purple, just to show you where that came from. The 10 stays in the denominator, no problem. And now up next, here's what I see. I see that we have that positive x to the power of 6, so, or x to the power of positive 6, so I'll leave that where it is. But then everything else is negative. Everything else is negative, so I believe I'm going to go ahead and take this y to the power of negative 4, x to the power of negative 2, y to the power of negative 4. I'm going to move all of that into the denominator. I'm going to move all of that. So we already have x cubed and y to the fifth, but I'm going to move everything else. So that means the y to the power of negative 4 becomes positive 4, x to the power of negative 2 becomes positive 2, and that last y to the power of negative 4 becomes positive 4. Cool. So now that I'm here, again, we're just going to continue playing it one step at a time. I see that we can absolutely combine some terms. We have x cubed, x squared, that'll become x to the power of 5 for sure. So let's go ahead and take care of that. 12x to the 6th, then we have 10. Again, that right there, these two becomes x to the power of 5 because you add those exponents. And from here, we have y to the fifth, y to the fourth, y to the fourth. What does that become? Well, you're adding up all those exponents. Five plus four plus four is 13. Flat out right there, and you're good. So we have y to the power of 13 in that sense. What else can we do here, my math party people? What else can we do? Well, one thing I also noticed is that, well, hey, when it comes to our regular old numbers, 12 and 10, we can simplify that because 12 and 10 are both divisible by two. So I can go ahead and divide them both by 2. And that's going to give me, over here, 6 and 5 on top and bottom. Then I also realized that, hey, we have x to the power of 6, x to the power of 5, 6 minus 5 is 1. So we'll have x to the power of 1 up top. We have x to the power of 1 up top, so we'll have 6 right there, 6x. And then that y to the power of 13 is finally over with. And there is our final answer. Again, it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to because, yes, we are applying more than one rule, but we just need to make sure that with practice, yeah, you can apply more than one rule at the same time, and you'll see here that the answer is going to be C. But again, with time, you'll be able to look at it and say, okay, I'm going to choose to move those negatives where they belong, simplify the, the numbers, apply the product law, whichever way you really want to. Again, as long as you apply it faithfully the right way, the order which you do it, Honestly, it doesn't really matter as long as you're taking care of the groups first. So there it is, my math party people. We have gone over quite a few examples here, about four so far. 
Um, and so with that, you know, I'll go ahead and take care of this last one for us because I really want to show you more examples. So let's go ahead and take care of this last one here, number 31, and then we'll move forward from here. So we have 9v to the power of negative 7, 6u to the 4th, v to the 6th, then we have 10 in the denominator. We have all of this going on, right? There's a lot going on. So here's what I'm going to elect to do. What I'm going to elect to do is I'm going to go ahead and just make all negative exponents positive first thing. That's the first thing I'm going to do. That's the first thing I'm going to do. So over here, I'm also going to take care of the 9 times the 6. 9 times 6, that's going to give us 54. And then I noticed that, again, that v to the power of negative 7, that's going down. And then u to the power of negative 6, that will go up to make it positive. So let's write everything we still have already at the top. We still have these. Remember my math party people, acing the ASVAB is not just about watching me do it. It's better that you practice as well. It's about watching, practicing, and mastering the material. And the best way to do that is to start off with my free practice test because it comes with video solutions so you can try it out yourself, see all the mistakes that you've made, and then keep raising your score with those video solutions, organizing yourself so you can lower that test anxiety and raise your score. No excuses, it's completely free. So go ahead and click the link there or in the description that way you can get started, raise your score, and do everything you need to do. Let's ace the ASVAB, but let's get back to the problem after you're done signing up. So we have u to the power of 4, v to the power of 6. Then that blue here, u to the power of negative 6, becomes u to the power of positive 6. Then, in the denominator, we still have that 10 that we had earlier. And then we have v to the power of 10. And then we said that that v to the power of negative 7 will now become v to the power of positive 7. So again, all I did was, first of all, multiply my regular all numbers. And number two, we went ahead and moved all negative exponents to become positive by swapping them between the numerator and denominator. All right, my party people. So lastly, let's clean house. Let's clean house and simplify where we can. So I already noticed that, hey, 54 and 50, or 54 and 10, both divisible by 2 both divisible by 2. So I'll go ahead and write my fraction here. And so that'll become 27 up top and 5 on the bottom. Again, if you divide the top and the bottom by 2, that's what you'll get. Up next, I realize here that we have u to the 4th, u to the 6th. So that will become u to the power of 10. Next up, we still have that v to the power of 6 just chilling there, right there. And then we also have this over here. In green, v to the power of 10 times v to the power of 7. That would be v to the power of 17. Almost done. Almost done. The last thing we need to take care of is the simplification of, right over here, v to the power of 6 and v to the power of 17, right there. The way we take care of this, my party people, is applying the quotient law of exponents. So we'll go ahead and subtract 17 minus 6, and we'll keep it in the denominator because, again, the denominator has a higher exponent. So we'll have 27u to the power of 10 over 5v to the power of 11. And there is it. We are good. That makes answer choice C the correct answer here. So again, you could have gone about it a different way. As long as you apply the law of exponents fairly and appropriately, the order in which you kind of do things, it's really up to you to be creative. It really is up to you. So with that said, my math party people, I'm Coach Anderson. Always happy to have you here. Remember to move forward into the worksheets after you finish this set of guided practice videos showing you all the different things that you can see. That way, you can move forward the right way, crush this with confidence, and raise your score. And so we both know this video just helped you with your test anxiety by just a little bit. And to keep lowering your test anxiety and keep raising your confidence, that's what my ASVAB All Access program is for. The link's right up here. Click it, watch the video on how it works, and you'll see exactly why thousands of my students have raised their scores and gotten the jobs they want. So click there, watch the video, and sign up to raise your score. I'll see you soon.